So, the real reason why Boyega got deleted off GRM is because A serious sit down talking video on the MK3 channel. Who would have thought? Yo, guys, you're MK3, and welcome back to my channel. Now, to all those new subscribers out there, you know what I'm saying? You might not watch my videos, you might not be subscribed to the channel, this might be your first time seeing my face. Welcome to the channel. My supporters know that I'm usually the most energetic person. I'm loud, I'm bubbly, I don't shut up. But today's obviously a little serious video, you know what I'm saying? A little sit down talking video. And I just thought, for the sake of it, I'm not gonna fake no energy. I'm not gonna fake that I'm as happy as can be. I'm literally just gonna be me, real. Sit down in front of you guys and just vent. Before we get into this video properly, I need to give a big shout out already, and that is to none other than my dad, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put a picture of him right there. I know he doesn't look old, you know what I'm saying? He looks like he could be my brother, but yes, that is my dad. The reason I gotta give him a shout out from early doors is because I was not gonna do this video. He is actually the person that spoke to me on the phone and convinced me to actually do this video for you lot, explaining what happened with my first single, Boyega. Quite honestly, my dad literally told me that, obviously I have a platform, I have a voice, and there's a lot of people that look up to me and watch me. Friends, family, kids, adults, teenagers, like, the age ranges and the differences between the people that actually watch my content and the things I do is actually crazy. This can help you guys learn from my mistakes so you don't make the same ones. It can kind of give you a deeper understanding of what I've been through and make you understand me as a person more. And I know there's been a lot of unanswered questions around the topic of my song and myself in general. In this video, I'm going to answer and talk about my song Boyega. Obviously, the lead up to it coming out and why it took so long. Why the song got deleted, of course. How I feel in this current moment and what the plan is now. I know there's a lot of speculation surrounding my song right now of why it got taken down, you know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of guesses, I've seen a lot of estimations, but I kind of just want to get through all of that in this video. I just want to shed light to a lot of fake rumours that I've seen going around and people have started to believe, but this video is literally just to give you guys an understanding of what is going on and what happened. But guys, I don't even want to ramble on too much in this intro, you know what I'm saying? I just want to get straight into the video, straight into the content, and just straight to talking to you guys. But guys, you know the anyway, please make to like, comment, subscribe, turn the post notifications on, subscribe to the second channel, the MK Way for more content there as well and you love out further ado let's get into this video i'm all right i think that's the kind of main thing i want you guys to understand is that i am actually okay you know what i'm saying obviously i had to get over the situation i had to fully deep the situation take it in and understand before i was okay but as of right now in this moment in this situation right now I am okay, I promise. Obviously while the situation was going on, emotions were high, you know what I'm saying, tears were shed. Um, I had to have a lot of conversations with a lot of different people. A lot of advice was given, but the reason I'm okay is because I took time away from the situation and I kind of secluded myself. In that time I had time to think, I had time to fully deep the situation and understand it and to just fully accept it. When things don't go your way or something bad really happens, I think the main thing and the first thing that you need to do is accept it. Until you've accepted it, Nothing else matters. It's always going to linger in your mind. It's always going to be at the back of your head. Like, you can't move on from it until you've accepted it. A big, big thing that also pushed me through this whole situation was you guys. Like, literally, that's not me capping. That's not me just saying it for the video. Like, you guys genuinely helped me and pushed me through the situation, I'd say. I received countless DMs and messages just full of support and love and kind words from all of you from different ages. And that was so heartwarming for me. And even though I needed to accept the situation for myself, I needed to accept it for you guys so I could get back to YouTube, back to my content and just back to doing what I do. Before I get into that and my feelings and emotions about after the song's been obviously taken down, I want to take it back to why the song actually took so long to be released. So, yes, November last year, I think that's when we actually made Boyega, you know what I'm saying? We made that so long ago. I think we shot the music video back in December, I even posted a little vlog about that. But Obviously, the song did not get released until May the 2nd. I think this was the first kind of real struggle I had surrounding the topic of the song because I had to kind of deal with it behind the scenes because I was getting a lot of messages from you guys kind of saying like, 
where's Boyega, what's happening with Boyega, we're waiting for Boyega, you know what I'm saying, which is understandable because you guys got told that initially the song was coming out in January, which I meant by the way, it was actually supposed to happen, but the reason the song actually got taken long was because of record labels. Now for the sake of not causing no drama or no problems, I'm not going to name no names of the people involved in the situation with Boyega, uh, I'm not going to name any of the record labels, I'm literally just going to talk about the situation without naming anyone, but initially, back then, we were going to post the song independently, back then it was just a question of what makes the most sense of where the song should be released, whether that be GRM Daily, whether that be my own MK3 channel, like, we confirmed that we was going to release it in January, you know and I'm saying, we confirmed that we are just going to get things going straight away, but what actually happened was, from very early actually, and I take this as a compliment because I'm not an artist, you lot. You guys need to understand that first and foremost, like, obviously I featured on Not Involved, obviously I made Boyega, obviously you guys have heard the latest Trends remix, you guys have heard MK3 and Jay's on the beat, like, Fine. Now these girls on my line I don't want a piece of mine Tell the girl take time it's MK3 and Jay's on the beat, come stop if you wanted to This music thing come from within, singing from the days I was back in school Them man back then used to know me, black kid on the wing, fast kicking ball Now they see me in the Mercedes, they say, MK I'm trying to be uh, like I've done a lot of stuff for surrounding music, but I wouldn't say per se that I'm an artist I think to say you're an artist, that has to be your main avenue, you know what I'm saying? That has to be your main thing that you're doing And I cannot say that music is first in my life, like, I'm a YouTuber it's as simple as that. Obviously, I still do music, I still do football, and I still do other things such as acting as I'm getting into this year. But first and foremost, before anything, I am a YouTuber. The main reason I did music in the first place is literally because I enjoy it. My mum's a singer. I hear her singing 24-7 around the house. And obviously, I've always been able to sing since I was young, but I just never really did it. You know what I'm saying? I never really showed it off or ever did videos about it or anything like that because I didn't really have the confidence. But when TikTok kind of started up and you guys gave me more confidence with my singing and the music I was doing, that is what gave me confidence to actually make songs. You know what I'm saying? To feature in a song such as Not Involved or actually make my first song as in Boyega. For one of the biggest record labels in the world to approach me and my team about Boyega, about me as an artist, before we'd even dropped it, was crazy. That, that was absolutely ridiculous for me. I'm quite a level-headed person, so I don't allow myself to kind of get too gassed too quickly, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like all good things can come to an end like that, you know what I'm saying? Boyega is literally a prime example of that, and that's not me saying live in fear, but that's just me kind of saying be careful, you know what I'm saying? Just don't allow yourself to get too gassed up before results are shown. This record label approached us early doors, you know what I'm saying, and they kind of came with the energy that they wanted to buy my first song, Boyega. Now, for people that don't understand the music world so well, when record labels buy songs, that doesn't mean they just take the song, it's completely theirs, you have nothing to do with it. It literally just kind of means that they'll push it more, they'll promote for you, and they'll kind of help make the song go as big as possible. This was just all good news to us, you know what I'm saying, because all I was hearing is that these people are going to help me make Boyega be as big as possible, um, help it reach its full potential, and basically just get out there and into doorways that I couldn't necessarily open myself. The process of actually trying to sort the situation with the record label took so long, and to actually put it in perspective so you guys understand, it took months. That is the reason why Boyega took so long to come out. It wasn't me holding it out, it wasn't me taking long, it was literally us just waiting for this record label to get back to us and just finalise everything. As time went on, the months went by, we were just getting closer and closer and closer to signing this deal, just getting it completely done. Obviously, this record label told me I was going to get a stupid amount of money, and that gassed my head a little bit, but again, I didn't allow myself to get too worked up and too gassed up too early, just in case something went wrong. In the end, before Boyega was actually released, months later, um, it was actually told to us that the record label would not be signing the song anymore. To kind of summarize so you guys fully understand, the record label told us that they couldn't fully support and handle the song at that current moment of time. That if we were to continue with them and to do this deal, then we were going to have to wait months before the song was actually ready to be released. But with everyone just kind of getting impatient, all of you guys messaging me, where's Boyega? And I knew I was kind of dragging it of how long I was taking. We just knew that we couldn't afford to do that. We couldn't wait months to release the song because at this time, I had already initially promised you guys that it was coming out in January. By this time it was March and the song still wasn't out. And you guys were getting tired, you guys were getting restless, impatient, and I didn't want the hype of the song to die down. I didn't want everyone to stop caring about the song. So therefore, I knew that we 
couldn't wait that long. Therefore, we kind of took it upon ourselves to release it independently, you know what I'm saying? We kind of just realized that we're taking long now. We need to get this song out because you guys are waiting. Now that myself and my team decided that we were just going to do it ourselves independently again, we just said that we need to do this efficiently, but we need to do it properly. We had the meeting, we just decided the plan for the song, the plan for promotion, the date that we decided we were going to release it, the date we were going to release the first trailer. Like We just patterned the whole plan for everything. And we were finally ready to just move ahead with actually releasing the song. When Boyega was released, least oh my goodness I will never forget that feeling because I was actually home alone at the time my family were out and I wasn't with any of my friends but I actually kind of preferred it that way that's obviously no disrespect to my friends or my family I love their company but it was more a thing of I was allowed to just be myself and just let everything out all the feelings all the emotions all the happiness I was running screaming shouting singing jumping I was playing my song at the top of the volume on the TV I was just so happy you know you know what I'm saying like even just thinking about it now puts a smile on my face because the feeling that I felt as that song got dropped on GRM Daily was the best feeling of this year so far. Obviously the views were doing pretty well as well which was just gassing my head even more because the song had done 100k in two hours and GRM Daily had changed it from a daily to a premiere within two hours as well I think. At the time, I'll be honest, I did not understand the difference between a GRM daily video and a premiere video, but everyone explained it to me when they changed it to a premiere, and that kind of made me feel more special that my song had done that in two hours. Like, they decided to change it from a daily to a premiere so quickly, and that just made me feel so good about myself. I actually didn't even know the person that called me and told me was actually Milladry, so shout out to him. But yeah, everything was good. We had a plan for promotion. We knew what it was going to do. The views were good. The feedback looked good. Like, everything was just perfect for me. And then... If my head wasn't gassed up enough, if I wasn't happy enough, this kind of took my happiness from a 9 to a 10 straight away. After the song had been up for 24 hours, there was a lot of interest from a lot of different record labels. After this, I ensured that there was nothing more important to me than Boyega. I literally just wanted the song to do well. I just wanted to promote it properly. I wanted to get the TikTok trend started properly. Nah, nah, nah. Boyega. 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 John Boyega. On the haters, instigators, and the fakers See you later, Boyega Jump Boyega this motivated me to just want to make more music, you know what I'm saying? Just to go through this feeling again and just to see what potential I actually have within the music industry. I've got Mumsy calling me, telling me she's proud. My stepdad, my stepmom, my dad, my grandparents. I've got friends, family, supporters. Everybody just telling me that they're proud, they love the song, and everything was just going so well that I don't think anything could have ruined the moment. Like, there was genuinely nothing that could have brought me down. Then it all went left. I think the thing that had a negative effect on me first and what actually played in my mind a little bit was the hate I was receiving on TikTok. There was a period of time that is only now starting to kind of calm down of just so much hate towards me and I don't even know why. What annoyed me the most was not understanding why I was receiving much hate. Like, why did people hate me so much? Why did people not like me so much? Like, what did I do to kind of deserve this? And the fact that I didn't know for myself and didn't have an answer and nobody had an answer for me, that is what annoyed me. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think that TikTok right now is the most toxic social media platform. Worse than Instagram, worse than Twitter, worse than YouTube comments, TikTok is the most toxic social media platform as of right now. I was just receiving so much hate towards Boyega and my music on TikTok, and I think it started to get to me when I started to see it pile up. You guys know me very well. You guys know that hate doesn't really get to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm very strong minded, but. When something starts to pile up, then it starts to kind of play over your head a little bit, then it gets into your head. It's actually funny because the day I released Boyega, Dino actually called me and told me, do not read any comments about the song. Do not read no meme pages, do not read the YouTube comments, do not read anything. As a YouTuber, it's literally my job to read YouTube comments and kind of taking what you guys are saying into consideration and use that to improve my content and do better. I didn't listen to the advice that Dino gave me and that was my mistake because that's when the hate actually kind of affected me a little bit and actually kind of played a toll on my mind because instead of ignoring it, I started wondering, are they right? Is the song shit? Am I shit at singing? Am I crap at music? Like, I was genuinely letting these people control me. Luckily for myself, I'm a strong-minded person, you know what I'm saying? And luckily as well, I had the right people around me just to kind of remind me of why I can't listen to hate. Regardless of the massive surge of hate I was getting on TikTok, I decided to just put it behind me. You know what I'm saying? I decided to focus on the positives. I was watching a lot of reaction videos about Boyega that are still up to this day. American people, German people, Turkish people, like people from around the world. And I don't think I saw one bad reaction about the song. 
As much as I was seeing how much hate I was getting, you guys were seeing me too. Don't get it twisted. I saw you guys defending me in the comments. I saw all the DMs that you guys were sending to me. Just tell me to keep my head up, to focus on the positives, to focus on the song, and just focus on the views that it's getting. I saw you guys just looking after me and just being strong for me. And I think that's the moment I realised that I wasn't being strong enough for myself. Why was I letting you guys fight my battles for me? Why was I letting these haters and hate comments get into my head when there was so much love and support on the other side from you guys? With doing social media, with doing content creating, with doing YouTube, I've started to realise that when you're winning, when you're doing well and when you're progressing, that is when haters strike. Haters don't like to see us win, that is a fact. To any supporter that looks up to me and is watching this right now, this message is for you. Do not let hate get to you, ever. Even though it might pile up, even though it might get a lot to handle, it might start to get in your head, if you just start to look at the love you get, the support you're getting, the positivity, that will always outweigh the hate, and this will help you to live a healthy, happy, and positive lifestyle. For my first ever single to hit 500K, half a million, on track to a million, in just a week, no one can ever take that away from me. No more fake news, no more fake stories, no more guesses. This is the real reason why Boyega got taken down. When we actually made Boyega, we worked with a third party, another team you could say, we worked with other people to actually construct the song. Because of this, they had pretty much the same amount, if not even more power than we did over the song. Over the whole timeline of when we made the song to when we actually released it, we worked alongside these people, you know what I'm saying? And I think over time we kind of had a conflict of interest in terms of the future of the song, what we were going to do with it and where we were going to go with it. In simpler terms, I think this party kind of just had a different view and vision of their future, where we had a different vision for our future. And it just didn't look like those two futures were ever going to align. I just hope that all of our love for the song of Boyega, all our love for the song and the craft that we had made, I thought that that would kind of overpower that and in the end it would turn out for the better. We all mutually decided that the next step for us was to get the song on all streaming platforms because obviously you guys wanted to hear it on Spotify, Apple Music, stuff like that and our main goal was just to get out there so you guys can start streaming. As we had obviously received a lot of interest from these record labels as I said previously, we decided to have a couple meetings, you know what I'm saying, we spoke to a lot of them, wanted to see what their view was on the song, what they wanted to do with the song, like how they wanted to kind of work with us basically. I think where some labels might have came and spoke to us and contacted my team, there was also others that would contact their team, still about Boyega and me. However, this also caused a little friction between my team and their team because where they were getting deals and we were getting deals, they thought this would be better, where we thought this would be better, and another little argument or a little disagreement came to place there. And obviously, this party had as much rights to the song as we did, you know what I'm saying? They were present when the song was made, they helped me with it as well, and they had as much power as we had over the song, basically. This is another big mistake that I made. Um, I feel like when you're making music and you're in this music industry, you need to know your facts. You need to know who owns this, who owns that, who's owed this, who's owed that, who has the rights to this, and like that. Like, you guys need to know all your facts when you're doing music because I feel like my biggest regret in this situation was not knowing enough information about my song and who had the most power over the song basically. So as you guys probably guessed by now, due to the friction between our teams as I said before, the stress and the arguments, this third party decided to get the song taken down from GRM Daily. Before this happened, I actually got the opportunity to conversate with the person that actually asked GRM to take it down. And obviously I pleaded, I tried to find a different avenue, a way we can kind of just all get on the same page and just get back to progressing with the song. But I just couldn't get through to them guys, you know what I'm saying? I tried, but I don't think there's anything I could have said or done that would have made the decision and the outcome be different. How did I feel when this happened? Absolutely crushed. I mean like, I went to YouTube, I literally typed in Boyega, refreshed and I just saw it was gone and as soon as I saw that, I put my head in my hands and I just started bawling you lot. Like, you guys know how I am on the MK3 channel man, I don't front, I don't lie, I just keep it 100 no matter what it makes me look like. I did start crying as soon as I realised that Boyega was gone man. To you guys, it's just a song, you know what I'm saying? But to me, like, that was my craft, that was my first single, like, the numbers it was doing, obviously, like, it actually meant so much to me, and it's not something that can just be replaced with another song just like that. Like, that song actually had a big part of me. At the time, I was just so upset that I just didn't want to speak to anybody. I just wanted to block everybody out. The only person I went to go see actually straight away was Jaden. I told him that I needed to come see him and something was wrong. And as soon as he heard that, he was there for me, you know what I'm saying? We went out, got McDonald's, spoke about it. And he was just there for me with the situation, you know what I'm saying? So publicly on the camera, I've got to say, Jaden, my brother, I love you. Thank you for being such a good friend and just get me through that shit, man. I called Aiden straight away after that and I just said, bro, I need a break right now and I can't deal with this right now. I don't want to deal with the questions from the supporters. I don't want to deal with everyone being sorry for me. Like, I didn't want any of that. I just needed to escape. And that's why me and Aiden went to Birmingham for about three days. When I was in Birmingham, I just went incognito mode, man. Like, I literally didn't speak to anybody. I didn't message anybody, reply to anybody. I came off my Snap, Instagram, YouTube, everything. I didn't film, edit. Like, the situation had really crushed me. 
Obviously, I need to give a big shout out to my brother Ace Mills as well, you know what I'm saying? Because in Birmingham, he was just there for me, man. He looked after me, made sure I was all right. And he's a big part of why I got through the situation as quickly as I did. So, Aiden, love you, my brother. Thank you. I needed to escape home to be able to deal with that situation, you know what I'm saying? I needed to go somewhere to clear my head, just think, and just think of it in a different light. As of now, how do I think about the situation? I kind of just see it as a lesson, you know what I'm saying? Even though I'm still upset about it and I'm not going to be fully over it for a little minute. I'm going to see this now as a lesson learned, obviously, a learning curve. Um, I see it as potential. Obviously, we saw the numbers that Boyega got in such a short space of time and I'm seeing it kind of as, this is the numbers I can achieve if I fully put my mind to things and I fully try my hardest with music. And I'm going to use this song as motivation and for a target for next time I release music and to hopefully surpass that. How do I feel now and what am I going to do now? So guys, I want you guys to know I'm okay. As I said at the start of the video, like, I have got over the situation quite a lot. Not completely, but I'm getting there, you know what I'm saying? I've got the right people around me. My parents, I've got to give a big shout out to my mum and my stepdad Jay because they were there for me that day that the song got taken down when I was at my lowest. And the talks they had with me and the advice they gave me was a big part of where I got through this. The pathway to success is not a straight line, guys. Like, it's more like a zigzag. You take L's, you take W's, you take L's again. Like, it's just a constant flow of ups and downs, but in the end, it always works out. This situation needed to happen to me in particular because I now get to use my platform for good to warn you guys and prevent it from happening to other people. If I'm showing you guys my best moments and the W's I'm taking, then I also need to bring you guys in on my worst moments and when I'm taking L's. Before, yeah, I would've saw the situation as an L, guys, but now I'm also happy and grateful that this is happening now in this stage of my career instead of later. This situation has definitely made me stronger, guys. I understand the music scene a bit more now. I understand that you're gonna be exposed to more hate. I understand that you're gonna get judged. I understand that there's some people that's gonna be hard to work with, but I'm ready to face the challenge. As soon as I can, guys, I'm gonna get back in the studio and just start working on my craft. You know what I'm saying? Trying to improve in music. I'm gonna work on my writing. I'm gonna try and improve my singing. And I'm gonna see how much of an impact we can really have on this music scene. 500K in a week, that is the standard now and that is the target. But I'm gonna make sure we can smash that and make sure we can just improve with every song we make. Minor setback, major comeback. That's what I wanna see you guys. Spam in the comment section below because that is what I'm living by now and that is what is motivating me to keep going. We're gonna come back hard and we're gonna come back better, but guys, you need to be patient with me and just give me the time to fully get back in there, fully work on my craft and just make sure that I can produce the best music possible. Whether you support me or hate me, I still appreciate you because every click on that song was a view. And don't get me wrong, you lot. Even though I saw a lot of hate and a lot of negativity towards the song and myself, I still saw the ratio of likes to dislikes on my song and that just proved that my supporters will always overpower my haters. Guys, that's the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope this video has given you guys a better insight of myself, my song, and why I got taken down. As I said before, guys, I am fine. You know what I'm saying? I've learned my lesson. I'm ready to kind of just put the situation behind me and I'm ready to just move on. I now know that whatever happens in the future and whatever situation I get into, my supporters will always have my back and the love will always outweigh the hate. Bonnet, man. You know what, haters? I love you guys as well, man. That might make no sense whatsoever, but you guys know me already, man. On my channel, I always try to spread positivity and good energy. And I'm not going to hate on the people hating on me because I feel like even if you guys are hating me, you guys are still watching me. I don't know, man. You haters can stay on the sidelines and keep hating on me if you really want, but that shit ain't gonna get to me no more. And honestly, I genuinely and truly believe that one day we'll be able to change all these haters into supporters, but I guess we just gotta see with time, man. But guys, just keep watching, you know what I'm saying? Just be patient with me, keep supporting me, keep believing in me, and I promise I'm gonna make you guys proud. I promise. You guys are gonna do Please to like, comment, subscribe, turn the notifications on, subscribe to the second channel at MKWay for more content there as well. Road to 200k, I'm back now, without further ado! Minor setback, major comeback. We have.